Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 12th August 2017. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your own trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topic, as usual, we'll use Q technical charts to go through oil, gold, India's nifty futures, few forex pairs, and we'll do the same for USA broad market ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM. Then we'll look at broad market internal analysis and sector and industry analysis using graph and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the posts in our traders community and may look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as I go along. This was the last slide of the session. I will now move to the live system. We start with US oil. On the left hand side, we are looking at USO using Q backdrop template using weekly chart. On the right hand side, daily chart using Q hop on template. Last week, we didn't identify any tradable setup in US oil. This week, it mostly moved sideways. However, on Thursday, it opened with a gap up. It was exactly at the memory resistance line. So if somebody was watching US oil using Q fine tune chart, they could take a very profitable gap short day trade by entering short somewhere in the middle of this candle. The exact entry point will be decided using Q fine tune chart and that trade will be quite profitable. I think looking at this daily chart, it looks it will be quite profitable as it dropped heavily on this Thursday candle. Let us look at Q fine tune chart to see if indeed there was a profitable gap short day trade, which was also taking advantage of the memory resistance line. Let's see where the memory resistance line was. It was at around 1025. So in the beginning of Thursday, we could look at US oil using Q fine tune real time chart. I'm scrolling to the beginning of Thursday. And we can see that price opened right at 1025 around that price level. From the daily chart, we knew there was a memory resistance there. It was a gap open day because the opening price level, that is the blue line, was higher than previous day's high. Previous day's high would be around this price level. So it was a gap up day. After market opens, the cyan lines were drawn, that is the early range high and early range low. As price went below early range low on this candle, we will not take the shot because it had a very long lower tail. But the next candle closed below early range low, that is this price level, and it didn't have a long lower tail, so we could enter short right at this price level. When we do that, following our gap 
short day trade rule our stop loss will be at the early range high price never touched the stop level instead it fell and when price came to this pause line we can see that the reward was much higher than the potential risk so the trade could be easily exited with very large profit at this pause level this is yet another example where we could use the memory resistance line effectively to take a short day trade we have many other instances where we can use the memory resistance for taking swing trade as well it can be either long or short and we will have a look at some such examples later in today's session there is a question let me go through the checklist for gap short day trade the question is on the exact entry level for gap short day trade gap day trade has the requirement that price has to open above last day's high last day's high was at this price level today's open on thursday that is thursday's open was at this price level so it was clearly a gap open day and additionally in this case we knew there was a memory resistance at 1025 so that gave us even more confidence to take the short trade the next checklist condition for gap short trade is that price should go below early range low it happened on this candle but this candle had a very long lower tail so we are not going to enter short on this candle the next candle will be the first candle where we could enter short stop loss is at the other side of early range that is early range high for short trade and we could book profit as price continued to fall certainly when the risk distance is covered so this was a very good example of gap short day trade which also benefited from existence of daily memory resistance line i keep on mentioning this if you see a memory resistance line ahead of price move always keep an eye on that stock it may help you anticipate a long or short trade it can be day trade or swing trade and we will see some examples of swing short trade that could be taken at memory resistance line that was our analysis of us oil let's look at gold we are looking at gold again using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side daily hop on chart on the right hand side last week we had discussed that gold already had a higher high and we said that if price comes to the value area and tilts back up then it may give us a go with flow long trade opportunity on wednesday there was actually a cyan candle that is a go with flow long trade opportunity however in this case price was already at upper boundary so we were not going to enter a swing long trade at the close of this candle still we can see that our analysis of gld worked out we were anticipating a up move from the value area on tuesday it had a very bullish shaped candle and wednesday it gap up so that was too late to enter long trade however at least we we not be taking any short trade when gold was falling in these few days because we knew that it already made a higher high and even though it was falling for few days there was no standard q short trade setup so our analysis of gold also worked out as we anticipated let's now look at india's nifty futures for that we will go to meta stock last week we had mentioned that price was already too close to boundary line so we were not going to take any long trade in addition we had noted the bearish headwind that had come in the daily chart 
so we were not looking for any long trend on this day there was actually a potential short trend and since then price fell heavily this magenta candle signaled a potential go with flow short trade you can say because price came down tried to go up little bit and came down again now if we were looking at only this daily chart maybe we will not be taking a short trade on this day however if we had looked at the weekly as well as daily chart of nifty futures and we might have looked at bank nifty futures also then we could see that both of them were bearish and there were possible short trade opportunities in both nifty and bank nifty at the very top this was a very good example of how we could use the bearish headwind and the bearish flow color candle to initiate short trade i actually posted the trade idea as a quiz right on this candle it was posted in the community on august 8th i had posted a quiz in traders community asking will india market start to drop from here the choices were yes possible as there is bearish headwind in both nifty and bank nifty and the other choice is not sure i don't use q charts but we use q charts and i thought there were optimal short opportunities these were how the charts looked like at that time for nifty futures we are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side on that day we had a bearish headwind in weekly chart bearish candle color also in the weekly chart in the daily chart we had a bearish headwind signal a few days ago price couldn't go higher than that and then at the right edge we had a bearish flow candle color magenta color candle so that was bearish and price closed below the cyan direction line below the magenta direction line so i thought this could be a very low risk short opportunity in addition i looked at bank nifty chart bank nifty also had a bearish headwind in the weekly chart its backdrop color was also bearish magenta and in daily chart we had a kind of lower high and lower low it had a flow candle color magenta that is bearish in daily chart so looking at both nifty and bank nifty i thought we could take short in both of them nifty also had a memory support some distance away and here bank nifty also had a memory support some distance away so i anticipated price will move and stop at this memory support giving us enough profit let us see how the trades played out i followed up with the charts two days later that is on 10th august we can see that if we entered the short on 8th august it fell rapidly and hit the memory line the low of the candle hit the memory line on 10th august so profit could be booked already on this day later on nifty fell further but that is after the fact we already planned to book profit at the memory support line and we would have done that on this day itself 10th august let's look at bank nifty how it worked out bank nifty also fell after the short was initiated on this day in two days it hit the memory support afterwards bank nifty fell more but that is again after the fact we would exit the trade with discipline at the memory support level this is a good setup yes david has a comment it's a good setup so if you keep on looking at the trades i share and you see how they work out you will have an idea of how i am using the headwind signal memory line flow candle color for different kinds of trades be it trend following trend reversing or exhausting the more you watch these trades in action the more you will be confident to take them in your account 
when you see the next trade setup. And soon you, I hope, will be starting to share your own trade ideas in the community. There is a question, how much profit booked? That is at a percentage level. Now, this question is very common. Whether I have this class or sometimes I have live seminar or friendly meetup, there is a question, what should be the percentage level at which we book profit? I don't look at it from that angle. In my view, if I try to fix the percentage, then I am trying to dictate to the market where it should go. That in my experience doesn't work. We cannot control the market. Instead, I look at where the next support resistance is. And I book profit at that level. Or once the risk distance is covered, even if there is no support resistance nearby, I don't mind booking profit. In this case, there was a support memory. So when I entered the trade on this day, my stop would be just below recent high. So at this price level, my entry price will be at this price level and my profit target will be at the memory support line. So the reward risk ratio was acceptable to me. And once the predefined price level was hit, I would exit the trade. Doesn't matter what was the percentage profit. There is another comment on 20% being a valid number. That is not my approach and I explained why. 20 is a random number. It could be 10, 20, 30, nobody knows. I am not trying to tell market where it should go, whether it should go 20% down or not. However, I can see that where the next possible support is. And if that next possible support gives me reasonable profit relative to the risk I'm taking, then I book profit at that point. And it works out quite well. If you see the trades share in the community, it works out quite well. I have shared a video earlier where I showed mathematically, all we need is have 60% trades profitable. And if we risk only 2% of our account in each trade, we end up with substantial profit at the end of the year by swing trading. Now, if we are looking for profit, then we can easily book profit 100% at the target profit level. That will also work out. That is the swing trading approach. Now, sometimes people may regret if the stock continues to move in the swing trade direction. In my view, that regret is not justifiable. The principle of swing trading is take a risk and anticipate a reward. So long as the reward is higher than risk, book profit at the reward level. Take the trade and book profit. And if you keep repeating that, it will work out quite well. That is for swing trading. For long-term investment, it is different. For long-term investment, we are looking for stocks that are at pendulum low, where the industry was weak for a long time and starting to gain strength. In that case, we take a long position. And there also, I look for support resistance, but not necessarily on daily chart. I may look for support resistance in the weekly chart. And let me demonstrate with an example trade that was also shared in the community. I exited it last week. It's in Australia market. Let me show that. And you know my approach, I always share the trades when I am taking them, when the setup is there and follow up with the result. So this trade on an Australian media company was shared on 5th July. July and now it is August, so more than one month ago. This company was paying more than 10% dividend. So it was a good dividend play. This company was SWM, 
SWM, which had good earnings quality, relative value was the best possible value score of 100 and dividend yield was one of the best. Only another company had a better dividend yield, but SWM had more than 10%, actually 10.7% dividend as of that time. So this stock was looking good in terms of fundamental. And at that time, the weekly chart looked like this. It was down for a long time, as you can see. Then there were several bullish headwinds here. And both those bullish headwinds could successfully capture the bottom. This bullish headwind and this bullish headwind. Since then, price went up. A bearish headwind came, actually two of them, and that could catch the top very well. Then price fell down. Where did price fall down? It came to the same low that was created by earlier bullish headwinds. And I saw that price was moving in a triangle pattern with memory resistance at the top, watermark level at the bottom. And at the right edge, price was going to break out from weekly memory resistance. So I thought looking at fundamental and the technical chart, it could be a good long term, long entry. And when I did that, my stop loss would be below recent low. So stop loss would be at this level. And I looked at the watermark resistance level and I thought if price comes to this level, watermark resistance, I will book profit. So I had very attractive reward risk ratio. Again, I didn't try to calculate the percentage and say that I need to get 20, 30, 40%. I just take what the market gives me. And so long as my reward is more than risk, which was true in this case, I'm happy to book profit and keep repeating the same thing. You will do quite well if you can simply keep repeating trades where you book profit, which are on average higher than the risk taken. Now let me show how it worked out. After a few days, price went up. You can see the weekly memory was broken. Price went up strongly. And now on the daily chart, it had approached the watermark resistance level. So one could book some profit here. That depends on somebody's approach. I think still it was very good profit. However, a long-term investor could also wait for this weekly watermark resistance to be touched or approached. Let me go to Metastock and open this stock, SWM. So SWM, you can see in the weekly chart, it came very close to where I thought of closing the trade anyway. That is the watermark resistance in weekly. It didn't quite touch it. However, I saw on Friday, the candle was looking somewhat bearish in terms of shape in the weekly chart. And how did it look in the daily chart? Let me show that. In the daily chart, there was actually a memory support line which was broken on this candle, this red candle that is Thursday. So on Thursday, I booked my profit. There is a question for the upper boundary with stretch release berries was not the cue to book 100% profit. You could do that also. So long as your risk distance is covered, you are free to book profit. Remember, we don't even initiate the trade unless the reward risk is acceptable. So once the reward is reached, we can book profit and simply keep repeating that. Again, whether it is day trade, like the gap short day trade I demonstrated using US oil, or this long-term investment on SWM, a media company in Australia, 
for many other swing trades we will share in today's session also you simply need to keep repeating that and when taking the trades follow the discipline follow the systematic approach the q unambiguous checklists are quite powerful as you can see from the trades shared in the community you can simply keep taking the trades and align them with the industry strength weakness also for swm i took a long term investment where i based my decision on few things for long term i always look at fundamentals this company had very large dividend even if the stock was going to go down little bit i was okay getting more than 10% dividend every year it is a media company swm happens to be a well known company it's not a penny stock or not an unknown stock that it will suddenly become zero it is a well known company it had good fundamentals it had good dividend it was breaking up out of resistance at a very low price and previously it had come to that level multiple times and went up from there so these were the factors i took into account for long term investment the unambiguous checklists that we have are applicable to swing trading and also we have unambiguous conditions for day trading for long term investment like in this case i combined multiple q signals and fundamentals to initiate the trade there are many examples of long term investment also in the community and we keep on discussing them in these classes remember how we could catch almost the very bottom of first solar how we could catch almost the very bottom of several drug companies all were pretty profitable what i mean by pretty profitable is it covered more than risk distance the profit was many times more than the risk distance and if you simply keep repeating such trades you will do well at the same time if you enter a trade it goes against you i suggest to be disciplined and exit the trade with stop loss don't again start thinking that i was right it will go up 10 20% i will just hold on usually it doesn't end up well even if sometimes it does go back up in the long run people will end up being another losing trader we need to decide in a disciplined way profit target stop loss level and follow them i also strongly encourage you to start sharing trades in the community then it acts as a diary we can look back and see whether we were sharing disciplined trades or not over the years i have shared hundreds of trades the trades are there in the community and that acts as a disciplined traders diary the more you keep such a diary the more successful you will be so we diverted to swm to illustrate a long term investment and the principle of booking profit in a disciplined way once the profit target is reached let's go back to the nifty futures okay so this is nifty futures we had very profitable short trade in nifty futures and also in bank nifty both of which were shared in the community let's now look at australian dollar last week we had discussed that price was very indecisive in this daily chart and also in the weekly chart i was not in a position to anticipate where the instrument will go it actually dropped a little bit it is in value area we already had higher high now if price goes up from here and gives a cyan color candle it will give us a go with flow long trade setup see last week it was not clear where it will go so we stood away we were not trying to risk our money but this week it is becoming clearer the signal is not there yet but it is becoming clearer that if price goes up next week and gives us a cyan color candle it may give us a go with flow long trade setup 
I think the reward risk ratio will be acceptable. The risk will be the distance between entry price say, somewhere around here and the recent low and the reward could be either at the watermark resistance level or the upper boundary. In either case, we will have higher reward than risk. Such signals could be used for swing trading or forex trader could use this directional inclination to take only long trades for Australia dollar day trades. Again, for day trades, one will use the Q fine tune template to actually enter the trade and actually decide the entry price, stop loss price and target price. Let's look at the other forex pair, sing dollar. Last week, we had looked at this candle and said that the inclination of sing dollar is to move up though there was no valid Q trade setup. So we were not going to take any swing long trade because there was no valid Q trade setup. However, we had discussed looking at the bullish headwind at the memory support line and this bullish shape candle, also bullish traffic light color that price may move up from there. It actually did go up. So using that inclination, one could take profitable day trades only in the long direction. We can see on Friday, price came down a little bit with a traffic light red candle color, bearish candle color. If next week it gives us a magenta candle, then it will give us a go with flow short trade setup. The last go with flow short trade setup was very profitable. If we have a magenta flow color candle next week, we need to see if the reward risk ratio is acceptable, keeping in mind that there is a memory support nearby. So if the magenta flow candle color comes around this price level, say, then our potential reward will be too narrow and we are not going to take any short trade at least not swing short trade. We looked at two Forex pairs. Let's now move to USA market. Let's look at the broad market ETFs starting with Spider. We had discussed last week that SPY was moving sideways and we said that we were not looking for any trade unless the signals were clearer. And this week we see that it dropped quite heavily with extreme high activity in the daily chart. And we see in the weekly chart, we have a bearish headwind. We are always careful about bearish headwind as a potential reversal signal. At the right edge, we see on Thursday, price closed right at the yellow direction line. So if somebody had taken a short trade on this candle, probably using fine tune chart as a day trade and had a good profit and held on to that, on Thursday, remaining position of that day trade will be either closed or stop loss tightened. Looking at the yellow support line. On Friday, price tried to go up, but closed lower. So the candle has an upper tail that is bearish. However, there is no standard Q swing trade setup at the right edge. We are down substantially already from the peak. So we are not going to initiate a swing short trade here because the stop loss will be pretty far. What is the possible next trade is if price goes up little bit and comes down, that will be a very nice go with flow short trade opportunity. Let's look at Daya. Last week I mentioned that Daya was the strongest. So I was not going to look for any short trade for swing trading. And this week Daya dropped 
a little bit, it is still some distance away from the memory support line in Delhi. Thursday, it had a bearish color candle in Delhi and Friday's candle traffic light color is also bearish and the shape is also bearish. Again, weekly as well as daily, some days had very high activity. This was one of the biggest down weeks for SPY Dia and also for QQQ as we will see now. Last week I had mentioned that though there was no standard trade setup, looking at the weekly bearish headwind, the fact that price tried to go above the watermark resistance level and was sitting right at that watermark resistance at the end of last week, I said if price went below the watermark resistance, it may give us a very low risk short opportunity. Not a standard trade setup, but I had mentioned that I am more inclined to take short trade in QQQ, not in DIA or SPY. That analysis worked quite well. Again, it was not a valid swing short trade. However, very profitable day trades could be taken in QQQ. As QQQ draw on Thursday, just like SPY, it stopped right on top of the yellow direction line. So if somebody had taken a short trade and was still holding some position, on Thursday, he will exit the position. On Friday, it went up a little bit. Traffic light candle color is still bearish. Next week, if it goes up a little bit and comes down, we'll have the next valid go with flow short trade opportunity in QQQ. Right now, there is no valid trade setup. Let's look at IWM. IWM was moving sideways for some time. We had mentioned how one could take a sideways market short trade using this bear release signal. Though there was no heavy activity, it was not a perfect box trade setup, but looking at the longer term sideways move, one could take a short trade. That worked out well. Last week, it tried to go up and on this day, it had a very bearish shape candle. And with very high activity also. So there was no standard trade setup. However, one could initiate a short trade on this day and that trade would be very profitable. So it pays to keep an eye on few symbols regularly if you do that, then you start to have a feeling of how the instrument is moving. And in that case, you don't only use the standard Q trade setups, you can use your own judgment about the instrument and take a short trade, but there still need to be a valid reason for taking the trade, not arbitrarily thinking that IWM is going to move down from here. If it is arbitrary, or if the reward risk ratio is not acceptable, then I strongly suggest stay away from those trades. If we follow the unambiguous checklist, look at the industry trend using QH, it shouldn't take more than a minute to decide whether there is a trade or not. If it takes more than that, then we are trying to justify to ourselves that there is a trade probably because of some news media report we are looking at, or probably because we made a big mistake, already invested a lot of money into a stock and looking for justification of why the stock should go up. I suggest you don't do that. Just follow a systematic approach, take a trade when signals are there, and don't second guess when the signals are there. Remember to take stop loss also, remember to book profit and keep repeating that. So we looked at all the four US market ETFs. Let's now go through the broad market internal analysis sector and industry analysis. Let's look at broad market internal analysis. Every week we analyze broad market internals by looking at NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side. We also look at three pairs of internals, new high-low, advanced decline, and up-down volume. 
just as was true for QQQ, Nasdaq also had a bearish headwind last week. And as we anticipate from that, price fell this week. NYSE also dropped significantly. In fact, it wiped out the gain of previous three weeks and some more. Almost the double of last three weeks gains were lost in this single week. So that was a big drop. Over a longer term period in the weekly charts, both the indices continue to be in uptrend. It will take quite some time before we have a lower high, lower low in these two weekly charts. Now looking at the internals, they continue to be weak relative to the indices. Last week we mentioned that the new high low studies were showing much lower peaks relative to earlier peaks, though the indices themselves were moving up. This was showing weakness and the new high lows for both NYSE and NASDAQ fell heavily this week. In fact, out of the six internals, five internals dropped. Surprisingly, only one internal went up. We wouldn't expect that up down volume of NASDAQ. Still, we have to say that out of six, only one went up, five went down. In aggregate, the internals are bearish. Now the internals were somewhat above zero level. So even though the indices dropped substantially, several internals like the two advanced declines, one up down volume still closed above zero. So in summary, we can say the indices continue to be in uptrend in the weekly chart. Internals continue to be weak. And this particular week, the internals are bearish. This study is using composite indices and weekly charts. So this is to be used only for longer term investment decisions, not for swing trading, certainly not for day trading. The bearishness that we see from the broad market ETFs in USA, the bearishness that we saw from Nifty and Bank Nifty from this market internals, we see the same from our sector analysis. Every week we look at 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week, yellow bar, performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar, performance of two weeks before the yellow bar. Together, they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. After a long time, this is the first week when the sectors show clear bearishness. 10 of the 11 sectors went down. This has not happened for a very long time. Only one went up, consumer staples, and that went up by a very small percentage. And in this week, there is no sector now that is up for all the three review periods. So after a long time, we have a sector graph that is clearly bearish. Energy sector is once again the worst performing sector. Energy had been weak for quite long time. I mentioned one trader sent me a few stocks. One of the stocks were belonging to energy. So just by looking at the stocks industry, I thought it is not a good idea to take a long position. Whether the stock goes up or not is after the fact. In superior profit way, we try to align the sector industry outlook strength or weakness with our swing trade or with long-term investment. So we were not going to look for a long trade in energy sector or one of the weaker energy industries. If we look at QH ranking, then we can see energy sector had been consistently bearish for all the last 12 months. It is one of the most bearish sectors.
for the last 12 months. That's quite a long time. Of all the review periods that we analyze for QH sector analysis from last five days all the way to last 12 months, across all these buckets, energy is the only sector that declined. So if we look at last five days, energy declined. If we look at last 10 days, it declined. Look at last two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, all the way to 12 months, across all the review periods, it declined. So probably if somebody is holding a long-term short in one of the energy industry stocks, one can continue to hold them with trailing stock to protect profit. There is no hurry to come out. Of course, partial profit could be booked. Right now, energy is very weak. Let's have a look at the QH sector table and look at the energy sector. Every time you open the QH sector analyst, it calculates the performance of all the 11 sectors across multiple periods, starting from last 12 months, last 11 months, 10 months, all the way to one month, and then for more recent periods for last 10 days and five days. Then it ranks the sectors according to their performance, rank one given to the best performing sector, rank 11 to the worst performing sector, and apply a heat map to the ranks. Cyan represents most bullish, magenta most bearish, and a color gradient is applied to the rest of the sectors. If we look at energy sector, we see across all the review periods, it is one of the worst performers, ranking nine, 10, and 11. This is very, very weak. We have to be very cautious before entering a long trade in energy sector or one of its industries. On the other hand, utilities across all the review periods is one of the strongest. IT is also strongest, relatively speaking. We could take very profitable long trades in utilities somewhere here. We could take very profitable long trades in informant technology somewhere here, maybe 12 months ago. This may not be utilities and information technology may not be at optimal position for initiating new long trades because we are not usually breakout traders. I guess most of the IT companies and utility companies will be at or near pendulum high. They may also start to show some bearish signal at least in the daily chart. Why I say that because of the large decline in both NASDAQ and NYSE this week with heavy volume. So this will not be a time to be brave and start entering breakout trades in the industries or sectors which had been up for a very long time. Could there be some industry which is at the bottom and starting to go up? There could be, and if so, probably they will be either in precious metals like gold, silver, or it could be in defensive industry companies. We may keep an eye on some of them from our QH industry analysis. We'll try to identify some such trades. However, remember if the broad market is starting to be bearish, need to be very cautious before entering a long trade. Instead, may look for short trade, either using options or using stocks. If you are shorting using options, I keep on saying, only risk a very small amount of your account. And that to only use options in instruments where the options bid ask spread is very narrow. Not only the stock bid ask spread, but the options bid ask spread is narrow. Also check that the implied volatility is not high. After all these checks, if you can catch the top of a stock using put options, you may make very large profit. Last week, I had discussed potential trades in AT, VI, and EA, drilling down from industry analysis using QH. And one of them gave 100% profit using put option last week. Another gave about 70% profit. So partial profit could easily be booked. But be extremely careful before entering an option trade, especially if you are just starting to trade using stocks and options. 
no let's go back to industry analysis we look at q edge industry table but before that we continue with the industry analysis graphs for the best performing industries analysis we see gold and silver went up we already anticipated a long move in gld though there was no valid q trade setup for swing trading gold indeed went up silver also went up four of the best performing industries now relate to transportation that is trucking road and rail railroads and ground freight you may drill down into stocks of these industries from qa but be careful before entering any long trade because the broad market is showing bearish signal the sector analysis is also showing bearish signal let's look at the worst performing industries we saw that energy as a sector was worst performer for all the review periods from last five days to last 12 months and we see the same weakness in industry analysis five of the ten worst performing industries relate to energy oil and gas drilling this one this one energy equipment services this one one two three four five so if somebody is holding short position they may continue to hold them while using trailing stock to protect profit now if we look at the very worst performer it went down by more than 10 percent oil and gas drilling remember i mentioned that we can use memory resistance for day trading as well as swing trading we already saw an example of taking a short day trade on us oil using memory resistance that was a gap short day trade very profitable and if we look at atw and any you will see very profitable swing short trades that could be initiated keeping an eye on the memory resistance lines let's quickly look at these two stocks atw and ne and you will see there are always opportunities if you wait patiently and either run sonar or go through a list of stocks that you always look at you will have enough trades ATW had already dropped a lot. So we were not going to take a long term short position in ATW. But see on this candle, what happened? It had a earnings day. We can see the earnings came out. That day had a bearish shaped candle. Memory resistance line was there. Next day we had a bearish flow color candle. So we could take a short trade confidently and it made a huge profit. I don't know if ATW has liquid options with narrow beta spreads. If so, this would be very profitable option straight as well. This is an example where we could keep an eye on the memory resistance line and using the bearish shape candle and bearish flow color candle in daily chart. And weekly was bearish already from last week. We could take very profitable short swing trade. There is a question on earnings. The earnings data is not available on Metastock, not on the charts. It is available on Zenith, but it is not possible to get that data into Metastock charts. Interestation, it is possible. So we have added the earnings data. However, I always suggest looking at the fundamentals also. So if you use Q Vital, look at your stock through q vital you will instantly see a lot of information fundamental scorecard price performance and you will also see the earnings rate the other stock i wanted to show was ne again we could see that the memory resistance was already there then the earnings came in and this candle was bearish shape had a bearish flow candle color it was at value area coming down from memory resistance line. So one could take a short trade on this day and make substantial profit. So we can see that we could have very profitable trades in multiple stocks in the worst performing industry. This industry was already weak and we could use Q Global combining industry weakness with technical charts to take very profitable trades.
let's look at the biggest rank improvers two of the rank improving industries relate to semiconductors however most of the stocks are at or near pendulum high or are showing bearish sign on the chart so it's not the time to be brave and go into long trade especially again looking at the weakness of the broad market so none of the stocks are showing much promise for me for long trade though the rank improve remember rank improvement doesn't mean the industry is going up it means that relative to other industries this is doing better that is about semiconductor industries but there is another industry drug retailers remember last few classes i had mentioned it was one of the worst performers for long 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 time it has improved rank significantly this week and there are few stocks rad cvs abc these are at a low base of course if the market drops even these stocks these are defensive stocks of course drug retailers are defensive stock they may also drop but they have a better chance of holding on to their price so let's have a look at these three stocks using q edge q vital and q global let's start with q edge industry so every time we open q edge industry analyst it looks at 255 industries a large number of industries it analyzes the performance do the ranking applies the heat map we can click this button to copy to the industry work area where we can slice and dice so if we search for drug retailers we can just filter for drug remember in last few classes i already mentioned that these were was performers for a long time magenta color across many review periods in the past but starting to show signs of strength and now we can drill down from any of the industries to its stocks by clicking this components button or you can press ctrl shift s the stocks will be retrieved in the industry stocks tab these are the few stocks we can copy and paste them into q vital to have a look at their fundamentals i always suggest looking at fundamentals even if you are not using it for swing trading for day trading no need to look at fundamentals but for swing trading and certainly for long term investment we look at it anyway it takes few minutes so there is no reason why we should not look at it just paste the same stocks here click on the calculator button go to scorecard and we see several of the stocks are optimally priced abc cvs esrx these three stocks have blue color across all the three parameters that is earnings quality relative value score internal value score so these are optimal value stocks in a defensive industry that is starting to show strength so these stocks could give us potential long-term investment or swing long trades i looked at some of these stocks and i found rad cvs and abc they are at some kind of base so let's look at them rad cvs abc rad is right at drugs retailer in usa large chain rad is displaying a bullish headwind in the daily chart and since then it is holding on to the price remember nyse nasdaq drop but this stock is able to hold on to the price you can change to the advanced drop on template we can see on the daily chart it is holding to the watermark support level there is a memory resistance level nearby if it breaks that price the memory resistance in daily we may have a very low risk entry opportunity again if the market drops even a low priced optimal value stock at a breakout point may also fall but this seems to be a much lower risk trade 
Now, then entering a long trade in semiconductors that are already at pendulum high. So you may keep an eye on RAD and the other ones were CVS, ABC. ABC chart also showing similar promise. It doesn't have a bullish headwind, but it had a big drop related to earnings. Now it came to the watermark support level. It had exertion. Price went up on Friday. So this created a bounce long trade setup. Remember, bounce long trade setup doesn't have any requirement on the weekly chart. It is a very fast trade based on exertion. So if we take a long trade on Friday, if price comes even to this lower boundary level, we could book partial profit because that will cover more than the risk distance. This is one of the companies that came up from QH. ABC. This stock has very good fundamentals. CVS. Did we look at CVS? No, we looked at right end. Looking at the weekly chart, we can see after earnings, it's, it's showing up the earnings data with the number and the dot. It is holding on to the price. It didn't drop. It is inside a triangle in weekly and daily both. If it breaks out of the triangle, we may take a long term investment. That would be similar to the trade I took on SWM. It will be a long term investment. The other possibility is if price comes to the memory support level here or here in the daily chart here or here and tilts back up from there. That may be even lower risk trade. If we do that way, that is catch the memory support, we should book partial profit at the memory resistance or see if it is forcibly going above it. If it forcibly going above it, closing above it, we may hold on to that. But if it is going there and pausing or changing the traffic light candle color to yellow, always book partial profit because it would still be inside the triangle pattern. Okay, let's look at the industries with biggest rank decline. Five of the rank decliners are in financial sector. Q sector graph also showed the financial weakness. If you remember, energy was very big loser in terms of sector and financial was also a big loser. Several bank related, insurance related stocks declined. So if you were holding long, hoping the interest rate will go up, Again, it's a reminder the hoping doesn't help much in stock investment. We see what the market is doing, just follow that. Be very cautious if you are still holding long position and use trading stock to exit them. If required with small loss or protect profit if you have profit. We could look at the QA industry ranking quickly. And because the broad market is bearish, let us try to look for potential shorts. I shorted by five days from the biggest ranking industry. So oil and gas is already weak for a long time. Let's look for real estate services. This was strong for some time and now rapidly declining in rank. So we could probably take some very profitable short trades and you may find more opportunities in coming week. Similar other industry could be this one, diversified support services. Also internet and direct marketing detail. We could have taken short trade last week also. It dropped actually last few weeks. Rank dropped pretty fast. You can find several industries from this QH which were bullish for a long time. It's laser and recreation is one. This one also real estate services, real estate operations when multiple Industries sound similar like real estate services, real estate operation that may give additional confidence to take a trade. In this case, short direction. If an industry is showing weakness, we are only going to look for short trade for swing or long term. If it is showing strength, sign color, we are going to take only long trade. However, looking at broad market weakness, we are going to be very cautious taking any long trade right now, unless it is in very defensive industries or in precious metals. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks for joining and I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.